Welcome back to another episode of the Ghosted Podcast. Uh, there's a new background now. I just did this rainbow bookshelf. So we got all kinds of cool yeah. things going on. And I have an amazing guest with me today who I will introduce in a second. You will probably recognize her. Uh, but we are so excited to delve deeper into emotional intelligence today and kind of learning how you can actually become stronger and better at and grow your own emotional intelligence through the love cards, which is what Nadia Shelsky is all about. She is the founder of Cards in Astrology and works with the love cards. And we work together all the time to bring more love into the world. So thank you for being here. That's great to be here, Abby. Always fun to talk to you. Always. <laughs> Hi, I'm Abby Rosenblum, founder of the Social Modern Matchmaking and your host of Ghosted, a podcast about making dating easy and fun again so you can find your boo. Get it? We'll talk with dating experts, coaches, and real clients of mine and single people from around the world. Stick around for corny jokes, dating advice, and deep dives into the psychology behind finding love. Right. I know. I wish we were on your patio, sipping some tea, eating some kava, but you know, oh, we can be good. virtual right now. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to kava. If you uh, want to sponsor us, we will definitely get some free meals. Oh, we love kava. <laughs> So um, if you have been listening to Ghosted for a while, you probably recognize Nadia. We've done a couple episodes together, if not mm -hmm. more. And today, you know, we're going to specifically focus on emotional intelligence. But if you haven't met Nadia yet, um, I want to make sure I give some time for you to give some background on what you do, the love cards, how you got into this. Share yeah. a little bit with listeners. Um, so five years ago, Gosh, time is flying by. I was newly single, had been married for 24 years, and I did not know how I was going to start navigating dating. And a friend mentioned to me that there was a system called the Cards of Destiny, and it was um, a book called The Love Cards Book by Robert Camp. And so I grabbed the book, and she said, make sure when you date to ask the person's birthday. And I was like, well, what do you mean by that? And she said, your birthday and their birthday have energy together and we can tell she said oh, let me teach you on how to figure out how that person's going to show up to you and before you even meet them you'll know the energies between the two of you and it was like too good to be true i didn't even know this thing existed and i dove into it i have a, a background in sociology and human resources so for me this was the same thing it was like connecting in any way that i could and so I learned that each birthday has a very special characteristic. And through that characteristic, how does that show up with me and my birthday? So I'm September 22nd and I'm a Virgo. Um, in astrology, it's, it's similar to astrology, but it's slightly different. It's easier and more tangible than astrology. With astrology, we would need to know as you know, your time of birth, your location, that's complicated. And then you'd have to pull up a chart and really analyze it. And most people, could do it if they really wanted to, maybe once they've got to know someone else, but this is a quick study even before you meet. And all you need is the month and day. You don't even need the year actually. So I started doing it and it lo and behold has worked really well. I have been with my partner right now for the last four years and I was determined on a specific card and that was like my main goal. And I know that sounds like more than just what about the person, right? But the birthday is going to show up and it's so true. So many characteristics of that person are based on their birthday. So you and I have been working with the cards for a while. We look oh, at yeah. all of your, your people and see their birthdays and match them up that way. And so I thought maybe it would be neat to tell you that your audience, that it's, it's totally entirely possible to use that buzzword manifestation to consciously find someone. And it isn't just guessing or, you know, oh, okay, I'll meet them. Um, but tell me their birthday and let's figure out how their birthdays work together. So we can teach a little bit of that today. Right. And I feel like it's so interesting because, you know, I think a lot of people are really into astrology right now. You know, the people, everyone I know has the CoStar app on their phone. You know, even when you make an account on oh, Bumble, like you can put your, you know, Zodiac sign on there. So, you know, obviously this is something a lot of people are oh. thinking about, 
Um, and it's not really that weird if you ask someone for their birthday mm -hmm. on a dating app. Obviously, if you work with me, I'll, I can give you a hint of the connection if you want. Um, but yeah, I would think it's also a good way to weed people out. If you ask someone for their birthday, they kind of know you're probably into something that's a little yeah. outside of the box. And if they're not into it, they can move on. <laughs> Yeah. And it's just one more way to dive into understanding their energy. Yeah. So what does it mean by energy? But we look at it in a, an, an astrology type of way. So I thought maybe we could even talk about that too. Um, when you think of manifestation and manifesting someone you like, what do you think of? Like, what's that buzz for you mean? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. I feel like it's like calling yeah. in that person or holding space and being mm -hmm. open to that person waltzing into your life, however that might happen. Maybe it's through a DM on Instagram. Maybe it's at the coffee shop. Maybe it's at a singles yeah. event. Um, I think sometimes it feels a little out there to people to think, you know, mm -hmm. oh, I'm going to manifest. Although it's a very big buzzword, I'm going to manifest, you know, my future partner into my life. Um, but how do the cards help people manifest? Yeah. How did it help you? Because obviously it worked out. Yeah. So there's, so, so there's seven energies. Um, there's, there's actually more than it's eight energies total, but there's energies that are really, really positive when you meet somebody. So you have to think of how do you work with that energy? So the first energy is called mercury and mercury in astrology is knowledge, but knowledge in the cards also means that you have something called moon, which means that you two are so similar that you're navigating energies very similarly, like you're seeking out energy. So we have to think of this a little bit more like the buzzword is 3D consciousness and 5D consciousness. So not as exactly scientifically like, oh, when you say energy to me, that isn't tangible, like we can see it. It's energy that we're feeling. So this is where the emotional IQ comes from. It's like, what does that mean to have mercury? It means that we're navigating life very similarly, like we, our value system is the same. Um, so when you're starting to date, think about your value system, you know, a little bit more. Like, what does that mean? Does that person um, care about the same ideas? Are they, you could even think of it on a physical plane, are they politically the same or politically, not just meaning like Democrat or Republican, but more are they, are they valuing the same ideas of life and people and people that they vote for and the cause? So, you know, asking those questions on dates, it's d diving deeper, but being curious, not judgy, but curious, which is fun. Then the second one, so there's a few of them that are really, really positive. The second one is Venus, is love. Everybody knows planet Venus because there's so many songs on Venus, right? But love is just really feeling comfortable. So when you're sitting across that person, and I'm always assuming it's usually the first date is either walking or taking a, a, going to dinner mm -hmm. or a meal. But you're sitting there and you're like, how, take a second to feel your aura and energy. And I know that you have um, coming up this whole spiritual connecting and understanding spirituality in dating. So this is part of it, um, is how do you feel with that aura? Is that person listening to you? Are they, are, they, are they looking you in the eye? But do you feel, what's the energy? And then even note that down. Like, I felt so comfortable and I don't even know why it was... That connection is very positive. And sometimes with these birthdays, we'll just naturally feel comfortable right away. You and I have that feeling. Totally. That understanding of one another. That our cards are so compatible. Your love card in your life path. So everybody has a card. And I just want to say, please come. I have an introduction for 20 minutes to anyone interested. And even if you're curious, but you're just a little hesitant, don't worry about it. I'll at least introduce you to your own birthday and the, and the EQ and IQ of your own birthday, which is so important. But we were going back to Venus, right? So your love card is a two of clubs, and that's my card. So you're naturally going to like two of clubs people. Um, and that is a real indicator of like what's important. So I teach this as well. And I've had many of your clients come to me and learn the system. It's not complicated. It takes about three sessions, which are a little over an hour. And you master this system where you understand by the time you're dating, you've got the birthday and 
boom, you'll know your connection to them really quickly. This is not difficult, but it is nice to be guided towards it. Um, I'm kind of feeling you're all good. So so many ideas in my brain. (laughs) I think we should probably also (laughs) mention to people there are like, let's say you're a two of clubs. There are multiple two of clubs throughout the year because all these birthdays are based on the cards in a deck. So they do repeat. So if you're like, oh my God, I have to only find the two of clubs. There's more than one birthday out there. (laughs) Yes. Which is so great. You have choices. So you're not just stuck with one birthday. That is like the perfect birthday for you. Um, and you have to really realize like what's at, you know, what is the most important thing for you? There's actually a connection after the next one is Mars and that is sexual energy and also wanting to do things together, physical energy. And some people meet and they actually in their birthdays together have so much Mars that it's a little too much. And so they end up kind of feeling aggressive, maybe heightened sexuality, but at the same time feeling a little bit upset with the person and not understanding. So that's an important connection to be very wary of that you want to have just the right Mars that you're attracted, but not too little or too much. Um, Jupiter is my favorite. Jupiter is amazing because there are many couples that are connected through Jupiter. Jupiter means money and values. And Jupiter is a connection as well that includes business, money, and feeling like you trust each other with money. And that's really important in a relationship. Like we forget to say that, that that's a really key component that this person values things the same way, that they're not gonna go out and overspend and they just don't care and they're frivolous. And and you may be on the other hand, very conservative and you wanna meet someone who matches Mm -hmm. that um, energy as well. So asking a lot of questions, of course, when you're dating too, like how do you feel about budgeting? what's important to you and not just how much you make, but how do you handle it? How do you handle your money? Um, How do you know you have enough for the future? Do you save Uh, things like that? But you'll notice in conversation when you have good Jupiter energy that you value one another on the money, you feel trustworthy of money. So that's a great thing to have. Um, And how does emotional Saturn, I was was going to ask, how does emotional intelligence kind of play into these really good connections? is you being aware of these energies and learning them by um, being aware of them in your own and meeting people, but also taking the time to feel it, maybe writing it down. Did I feel comfortable? What were the emotional feelings that maybe this person said nothing that made you feel, I feel really connected to them. I'm not even sure why. We didn't even talk that much. I just naturally feel connected. Um, like two friends. It's similar the same way. You know, when you meet someone at a party and you start chatting, you're like, yep, I like them. I I don't know why, but I like them. This system teaches you to be aware of it and to be more confident in it. So you, you have a lot more power. And I say you, I'm not just you, Abby, but all of you, (laughs) audience, you is, is you have a lot more power than you realize and a lot more emotional understanding than you give yourself credit for. Most likely some people are really good at it. Um, but we're not all taught early on when we're children to trust our intuition and trust our guide, our inner guidance system. We have it if we just slow down and kind of feel it. So my recommendation is when you go on a date is jot down your emotional energy right after you're done. What did you feel? Did you feel compatible money-wise? Did you feel trustworthy? Did you feel like this person could be, um, cares to have that interaction and, and the same value system? Um, you know, we, we, we tend to ask the, the 3D questions of like, you know, uh, very specific questions, but we got to, how did we feel when they answered it is a really important part of it. And that's where this card system gets you more in touch with it with your IQ of that and EQ. So some people have it. Some people are really good at it. And it's just a confirmation of it when they come to see me of like, oh, I I knew I I could feel that, but I just didn't put it to words. Or some people just have no clue and that's okay. There's no right or wrong to this. Yeah. And it's so interesting too. Like we've seen with some of the good connections, they pan out like you think. Sometimes they don't, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe is that, could that be something like maybe someone isn't as in touch with their EQ and how they're feeling? Yeah. You know, we bring to, many of us bring to dating our emotional baggage. 
you know, something we haven't worked on and we'll cloud it with that. We'll, we'll just start, you know, feeling like defensive or we haven't worked to some of our own issues and we bring it forth. And that energy can really kind of lock into the experience. So I always tell people like, first learn about yourself as much as possible through the card system or whatever system, astrology, um, and learn how you decipher through the world. And that will make you understand and maybe be more easy on like, that's just who I am. I'm always going to be, you know, I have a very excitable energy. That's a two energy. We are a conversation. We love it. You know, not everybody wants that energy and feels that that's really great for them. So being in touch with your own energies um, is, is right. awesome. It's a great And start. so we kind of went over some of the connections, some of the best ones, I think. <laughs> Shall we continue mm -hmm. on with the rest? Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, those were the best. So there are, the, you know, there are of course difficult connections, and um, the first difficult connection, and all of these are in order because they always stay in order, and what you want to see your your connections as. Saturn is a very rough planet, and Saturn means that you see truths in other people. So here's an, an emotional IQ: is when someone's talking, you kind of critique them you naturally critique them. That means you have sectarian energy with them. You're like, they could really do a little better at this. They're not quite, you're, you're, you're basically an inner critic. It doesn't mean that you're right or wrong. It's the energies that you carry together. And you don't want too much Saturn because you're then kind of deciphering in a little bit of a negative way because Saturn, too much Saturn is, is basically like, I just want to tell this person they need to change. <laughs> You know, how many times you met somebody and you're like, they need to change. Well, someone else may not have that energy with them and think they're fabulous. Your energy to them is satarian and you just want to critique them. You know, you really shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. You really. And some people with a little bit of Saturn energy is okay. Where, oh, I'm fascinated because we have other good connections that you can give mm -hmm. me feedback, feedback. But then I don't want too much because how do you, just because your energy feels it with me doesn't mean everyone feels that. So you really want to be aware of, of maybe giving that person a little feedback and seeing on a date, like how they handle it. Like, can I give you some feedback that it's just my personal opinion, obviously, but I want to see how they react to that. So that's the feedback right. energy, Saturn. And, and something to think critic. about too, just um, because there's so much to learn about all of this, you have multiple connections with one mm -hmm. person. So you wouldn't maybe just have a Saturn connection or just yes. a Mars connection. So sometimes if you have, you know, one that's more difficult, right, it can, you can compensate with other connections. Yeah, especially if you have. So they're in order to, we look at it. I have a software for it. It can be done through the book. Um, if people want to learn it, I teach it and I'm happy to show them how to connect. There are 11 connections generally. And those, the first three are the strongest mm -hmm. that you'll feel to someone else. So it's always really fascinating to know, like, well, do I have Jupiter energy? My favorite is Mercury, Jupiter, and then um, Mars. I want to have the trust with money. I want to feel like this person understands me. Maybe their life hasn't been the same as mine and they've gone through some difficulties, but they understand mm -hmm. my approach to how I handle things. And you can learn that through the first two dates. I think, you know, the first date is always just, what is the energy like? Are they curious enough to want to get to know them a little bit more, right? You always talk about this. The second and third, you can really dive into some good questions oh, yeah. too. And we can help that. Can help <laughs> okay. Them. So we got sidetracked again. We just talked about Saturn. What's left? Yeah. Uranus. Uranus is tough. Uranus is um, the unexpected. Uranus is often called the planet of ghosting. If someone has Uranus to begin with, their very first connection, chances are they don't feel connected to that person energetically and they're not even aware of it. Like they will think of excuses of how they can not see them or where they want to say, well, I'll decide. I'll decide. Maybe I'm, I'm, you know, they just don't feel grounded to the person. They're not excited. It's a tough energy because the, those two that carry it need a lot of independence together and they need to understand to let each other go and then come back. And some people carry um, a lot of Uranus air energy and they're okay with it if it's equal, but you have to be careful because you and I have noticed that it causes sometimes Right, or it's like really hard days. to schedule the date. People keep canceling on each yeah. other. You know, I see that all the time. Uh -huh. If someone cancels like again and again and again, I'm like, okay, 
I'm, we're not rescheduling this. And sometimes when we look at the uh, match, it might be that they have that Uranus connection. Yep. Yep. It's crazy. Uranus is the tough. Saturn and Uranus are really tough. If you have too much of that, that can feel. And, and you think about all these that you've had these feelings and connections. It's, it's amazing to see if maybe that was in fact true. You had Saturn or Uranus first. There's two more planets that I want to talk about. Neptune is the planet of dreams and fantasies, where we actually see the person in such a good light that we're not looking clearly. We have rose-colored glasses where they're so perfect, but we really need to make sure, is this reality? Are they really, truly perfect in the long run? Like, to get to know more of them? Because um, Neptune feels so good at the beginning because you're like, this person's fabulous. And I don't know why I just love them. They're fabulous. They're great. I want to get to know them, which is wonderful. It is a really nice connection. It, the downside is that we're not realistic about that. And we need, you know, it's like when people fall that fall head over heels at the beginning, they realize like, oh boy, that was, that was really <laughs> intense energy. Right. Oh my gosh. <laughs> And yeah, I feel like that's an interesting one to be aware of oh, yeah. too. I mean, that's the first connection that my husband and I have together. Um, but I will say, I don't think I fell head over heels in the first date. <laughs> really? Yeah, but and did I think you I see still him in do. a really good light? I still look at him and I'm like, ah, that guy's so cool. You know? Yeah. <laughs> And the, and the cool thing about Neptune is it makes up for the negatives. Neptune covers up. So we often make, I call it making excuses, but we, we validate that they're great, even though they may have flaws. I knew a couple, he was a very big drinker, right? And she did not see it. She could not see it, but everybody else could, but their Neptune was so strong. She couldn't see his flaws. And it was like, that's Neptune air energy. You're not mm -hmm. seeing it totally straight. Um, but at the same time, it also makes it feel really good because you think the person is just fabulous. It's a wonderful energy as well. Like there's the right. high and low side to all those energies. And there's one more, the forgotten planet. <laughs> Pluto. And in fact, it's astrologers are saying too, they're like the, un, the un, understanding of Pluto is so complicated. Pluto on a high side is transformation. That person causes you to transform. They'll shock you and they'll do shocking things, but you really want to change when you have a Pluto connection. The low side is there's fighting with Pluto because they're so different from you in certain beliefs or certain feelings that it's, it's really difficult and you can't always see eye to eye. Like they'll get upset and you'll say, well, did you see why why I got upset about that, or you're getting upset through that, you know, this whole communication thing might go astray. So Pluto energy with the higher side is being very aware of it and saying, we're really special together, but we have to realize we come at it from different angles. Um, and, you know, maybe the way that ups I get upset is something completely different from the way that you would think that someone would get upset. So you have to honor each other more with Pluto, but it makes you work hard. It's a, it's a tough planet that makes a relationship really have to work. You, so you can't be asleep at the wheel and just hope Pluto will take over. <laughs> we'll make so t-shirts. We'll make some t-shirts with that later. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So when Nadia and I are matching people um, up, this is kind of the, these are the different connections that we're looking at. So I know we had an episode talking about this a little bit, but if you didn't listen to that one, you know, we'll, I'll give her two people, the two birthdays, and then we'll look at, it has 10 connections that your system gives us, correct? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 11. And yep, then we 11. kind of decide, yep, 11. okay, could this be a good match? Should we try it out? Cause they have so much in common anyway. Um, you know, a lot of times it can be a determining factor because we do see it play out. Not so good if it's a really negative connection. I just want to give you kudos for sticking with the system for a few years, but also realizing just how much you have clued into that energy and learning that emotional energy. Even before I tell you right. their connection, you're like, I felt that. Yeah, it's interesting too, that. because I can't believe we have been doing this. Has it really been three years? <laughs> Two years? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're we're coming on our, th yeah, our up and I to think our third you know year. I feel wow. like I am kind yeah. of the uh, I'm not only using this to help my clients, but I'm also kind of the test subject of you know it's helped me increase my emotional intelligence and intuition, which is obviously key for matchmaking. Because like you said, sometimes I'll just know it even before mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I give you the match. I'm like, this felt really good. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm right that eighty uh, percent of the time. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> but it's teaching you to be, get more in touch right. with your emotional intelligence and trusting it. We're not taught as children to trust those inner feelings. Um, some parents are great at it, but most parents were just not. Our culture isn't um, a society. We're not allowed to, we're sort of taught everything is surface and to just see it on the surface. So this, exactly. this gets you get better. And so I love that we're talking about this because you can grow your emotional intelligence. Yeah. I know that's like a big thing on people's lists of what they're wanting in a partner. Um, it was number one thing last year that singles were looking for mm -hmm. in a survey from match.com. Emotional intelligence was the number one thing. Um, Nadia, I wanted to ask you, That's what are some it. other questions people can think of yeah. when they are trying to get more in touch with their emotional side? Um, to ask themselves. Questions to, to ask of, someone you know, else or yeah. Yeah. So um, doing a little visualization of envisioning your perfect partner energetically, not physically, energetically. Um, so what does that mean when you're talking? And I did this and uh, also when I learned the system is like almost imagining the conversation, the flow, the energy between us, the, um, and, and that is so helpful. So taking a few minutes, even going on and, and listening on YouTube to like something relaxing so that you get yourself in a very relaxed state and then picturing that person and what does it feel like to have these conversations and how do they respond to you? What does that feel like? Um, and, and being in that state of, of just, wow, there's a potential match there and I'm going to envision it. And that's that whole manifestation as well. So learning that energy of, of what we described in those planets right. and how would that feel for and you? And Nadia, if people are listening that's to this start. and they're like, okay, I got to know more about my card. I need to know all about the love cards, the cards of destiny. How can they reach mm -hmm. out to you? How can they learn? Give us the details. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a Calendly um, account as well. Cards and astrology, that's plural for cards. And there is a um, place there for setting up an intro, uh, 20 minutes so that I can read you your card, talk about your energy and show you a little bit of how the system works. If this jives with you, um, great. If it's if this speaks to you, wonderful. I'm here to help you navigate and you can take it pretty far. We can go um, for the next three to four months learning the system while you date and helping you navigate along with working with Abby. So it's, it's a great tool to have and cards and astrology.com is my website. That'll be up in the next week. And, um, I also have birthdays listed there with, uh, descriptions of how you show up initially as your birthday. Um, if you would want to look at that. And so if you Google cards and astrology, there are a few things to learn about it as well. Um, but I'm here to teach it more in the dating environment and there are not a lot of us out there. Um, I'm actually studying to become a certified card counselor called an order of Imagi, which um, just means that I've gone through many mentors. And so I'm working on this this year. So I'll be offering some specials as well for people to participate in my studies as well. So though I've been um, counseling on this for a while, I really wanted to get certified. You know, everybody's buzz certified, but it's just nice because Robert's teaching it and he's the one who wrote these And we'll put all of these links in the show notes so you don't have to memorize it. You can mm -hmm. just go scroll down, click if you're watching the YouTube video, go check out the notes there and go and book a time with Nadia. You will not regret it. I yeah. promise you. Um, I don't think we've really had anyone who's worked with you that hasn't at least felt like it was interesting. And we've had some transformations yeah. that we have seen people working with you. It's so true. And people who have really committed to the system have manifested some amazing connections. I have to say, working through these years that we can absolutely validate that. Um, one more thing, LinkedIn um, under Nadia, uh, Nadia Michelle actually is my LinkedIn account. It has 14 more uh, recommendations that people have written pretty heartfelt ones on how they, how the system worked for them and what I helped them Amazing. with. So that and you could just ask me, but I'll only say good things. So. <laughs> oh. 
Thanks, Abby. I love it's working with so you. It's been so fun. fun. It's oh just, I, I it's love great. it. I can't wait to have Kava really. on your porch very soon. Um, and before I let you go, do you have any other mm -hmm. words of wisdom you might want to give to our single listeners? Trust yourself. Trust your heart. Trust your inner intuition. It's very important now. We're getting better at it. When I say we, we're just all going through so many changes right now, but learning to feel it, um, trust it, and value Amazing. your intuition. Well, thank Super you again, important. Nadia. And I can't wait to have you back on the podcast soon. Yeah.